Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, first, as you probably know, we have uh, uh, adopted a new framework under which we will be conducting our monetary policy, what is called the price-based monetary policy. It's a more uh, forward-looking monetary policy, and you are right to uh, ask me the question about how we are seeing the 2019, because this is uh, one of the key elements which has contribute to the decision of MPC. One, we are projecting to have uh, GDP growth at around 7.8%. Uh, this is this is number uh, given by the Minister of Finance, Central Bank, in uh, collaboration with IMF. But uh, what is most important is the orientation. We are very sure. We have analyzed um, uh, different factors uh, which have been uh, uh, driving the economy, and uh, we are sure that uh, the direction is very good. We may have even more than 7.8 percent. That's the growth. So the inflation uh, will remain low. Uh, we are projecting uh, the inflation to be around 3 percent in 2019. And uh, we have also made a clear assessment about liquidity in the banking system, which, is, uh, which has been improving for the last three years. For your information, uh, we have ended the year 2018 with a high gross credit private sector, around uh, exactly 17.1 percent. And uh, all indications we have, including the survey we have done on site the central bank, indicate that we will have uh, the same trend in terms of financing the economy by the banking sector. So uh, putting this element together, we have maintained our monetary policy stance because uh, the, the, the interest rate, the central bank rate of 5.5 is there for now one year and a half. And it, this has really contributed to, our, to create this uh, stability in, uh, in our macroeconomic environment with low inflation, stable exchange rate, a good uh, economic uh, perspective and uh, enough liquidity in a banking system. Right. Oh, Professor, a, a particular criticism here that has been uh, geared towards uh, price level targeting as opposed to uh, inflation targeting is you would have to actually look at uh, prices in terms of uh, wages and, and this keep away from traditional CPI as would be the case for inflation targeting. And correct me if I'm wrong, Professor, but it's only the Swedish Central Bank that has been using this in the past few decades. Uh, isn't this something that uh, maybe would take away from uh, the monetary policy stance that Rwanda has been having and has kept inflation at bay? Uh, yeah, look, we, we are now classified uh, among few countries by IMF which have what we call monetar evolving monetary policy framework. Means we have been implementing our monetary policy using monetary aggregate, means the quantity of money in the economy. But for the last five years, we have been working very hard to have the money market uh, working. Today, uh, uh, all interest rate on the money market, means treasury bill rate, uh, interbank rate, repo rates, have been really converging toward our, the central bank rate. That's, that's the first condition to think about uh, the use of interest rate as an operating uh, tool. Now, we, we are seeing some good signals in terms of how the market rate, means the deposit rate and the lending rate, are responding to our action. So we, we have uh, seen for the last three years, we have seen some uh, co-movement between our central bank rate and the lending rate and the deposit rate, that's another aspect we need to see developed further be before we are adapted the way we are doing now the, uh, our business in central bank. But on uh, the other side, we, the, there is a lot of change in the economy so, so that the, the, you know, the, the, the change in the lending rate from action of central bank affected the global demand, the, 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 the aggregate demand, the way people are doing business. So I think the government is doing a lot in terms of uh, 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 modernizing some sectors like manufacturing, 
but also the risking agriculture sector. So this will contribute really to link the monetary system or the monetary sector to the real life of the population. We are already there, but we need to have this improving before we think about inflation targeting. That's why we are having a band of objective in terms of in, uh, inflation to be sure that our monetary policy is uh, driving the inflation in the band, but progressively when these other conditions will be in place, we may shift to uh, full fledged inflation targeting. That's the overall objective. Professor, uh, uh, fascinating indeed, and uh, that, that is definitely something to watch uh, the, the coming few months. Um, I want to draw your attention to an announcement uh, from uh, uh, the governor, uh, Governor John Rangobwa, who uh, unveiled new notes uh, just today that are going to come in circulation. I'm sure you're aware of this. But th my issue here is uh, with the, the, the random franc depreciating by 4% in 2018. Uh, 2016, I was there, depreciated by over 9.6%. Is this time to actually have uh, a, another currency, another note rather, uh, uh, running concurrently with the old notes, given the fact that depreciation is where it is right now? Yeah, uh, as you rightly said, 2016, 15, we had a very high depreciation, and uh, you know what, what happened. We, we, we had these uh, global issues where our export declined by around 2%, means uh, we, we had external shock. But starting by 2017-18, we, we for example, the year 2017, we had more than a 50% increase in our export. And this really has contributed to increase our foreign reserves, the same in 2018. So this has contributed to have uh, less pressures on exchange rate. So we, we, today uh, we have assessed what will be our balance of payment in 2019-2020. And uh, we are not expecting really to have different uh, development in 2019 compared to 18, 17. So that, that, that's why we are, we, are say, we are saying in terms of forward-looking aspect of our monetary policy framework, even if we don't have a target on uh, exchange rate because it's market-driven, but comparing the macroeconomic condition of 2019, 2018, and 17, where we had an average of 4% depreciation. So we, 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 we hope that uh, the, the, the foreign exchange market will behave uh, as it was in 17 and 18. That's the assumption.